The Zone Coverage Podcast Network. Here we go with the latest installment of Double or Nothing, Zone Coverage's premier gambling podcast. I am your host, Colt Molesky, the number one degenerate on the show usually. And I'm joined by some hockey heads. The football season is officially over. The NFL is done. Uh, hopefully you made money with me betting the Super Bowl and getting in on all those juicy prop bets. And now it is time to look to other sports, hockey, because we are in Minnesota and because we are mid-hockey season. Hockey is the, the sport to turn to right now. And I've got some of zone coverage is best for hockey. We have Giles Farrell and Ben Remington on the line. Boys, thanks for coming on. Thanks. This is where you guys talk to me and, and, and say stuff. Well, I, I mentioned uh, you mentioned the degenerate here, and you were talking to us, so I was just waiting for you to just lead right into us after you said that. I, w- I was figuring that you know I'd try to cushion the blow. Usually, if I come on too strong, people run away from the show. Yeah, true. We can relate. Like, like a stiff shot of Kharkov. <laughs> I wouldn't know anything about that. Uh, it is mid, right about mid hockey season. Uh, you you kind of get the. Uh, hopefully, you have a feel of the teams, kind of what they do on a night to night basis. Uh, and so, I'm going to go to you guys because you are obviously kind of in the the NHL every single day, observing and, and watching. You guys are uh, on the beat for the Minnesota Wild for ZoneCoverage.com. So give, give me a read on some of these teams. I got a list of teams that I am looking at that I uh, have my eye on as far as gambling-wise. But uh, both of you guys, give me, give me the teams that you would depend. If you had to put your life on a team winning uh, on a certain night, on a given night, where are the kind of the teams you trust to go out and get wins in the NHL right now? Uh, I think the easy one's the Lightning right now. Um, they're not only the top team in the league, you know, from – from a, a point perspective, but you know they're they're very solidly built. <clears throat> There's a lot of talent on that roster, and there has been for quite a while. Um, you know, so, so I would look at them because you know they're they're healthy. As long as they're fully healthy, they they seem to be kind of a freight train, and and they've certainly been very consistent this season. Um, you know, and they're up there as far as uh, as far as goal scoring goes too, for sure. So that that's an added bonus for for the over under types. I mean, if you're looking for if you're looking for a sure bet on uh, wins, I mean, and we're on a gambling podcast, you can't go further than the Vegas Golden Knights, who <laughs> can't lose at all, <laughs> and their record at home is even more impressive, where they've only lost five times this year, and we're almost three quarters of the way through the season. Both of these teams were kind of the ones high on my list. You've got the di- scoring differential plus 49 for uh, Tampa Bay, and then you have it at plus 36 for the Vegas Knights. And like you were saying, 19-3-2 and two at home. Crazy good record. How crazy is it that this team is 35-14-4 and four, and they just got put together at the beginning of this season? Uh, crazy doesn't even begin to describe it, especially for – Folks like Giles and myself who you know, followed the expansion process very closely because it affected you know, each and every NHL team, especially the Minnesota Wild. But um, I don't think hockey folks can say enough about how ridiculous it is that the Vegas Golden Knights are this good. Um, and that's why they kind of scare me a little bit. <laughs> um, but the Vegas flu is a very real thing. The Vegas flu has taken the NHL by storm. Uh, teams come into Vegas and they suddenly – don't have the energy they once had once they uh, step on the sheet of ice. So, the- I told some, I told someone yesterday that I look at the expansion process now in hindsight that it wasn't just one genius general manager Vegas who uh, was able to put this <laughs> team together. It was thirty idiot NHL general managers. Who- <laughs> That's what you need, right? You need Definitely. some luck, you need some skill, and then you need some stupidity to, to be good, right? Definitely. Exactly, and the NHL is full of stupidity. 
Well, they are the favorites yeah. too to win the the West as well. They're not just playing really well. They're one of the best teams out in the NHL right now. Uh, and like we've already mentioned, so good at home. If I'm looking at them uh, on on the money line or even on a spread at home, this seems to be the team to take right now. Uh, they don't have a competitor as far as best home advantage right now for anybody in the NHL. Well, I mean, you can say the Minnesota Wild are actually kind of up there. Uh, the Wild are very, very good at home, as, as Fox Sports North will tell you about 37 times a night. So um, good. But, <laughs> but you know, to your point, Vegas is insanely good at home, and that's a good bet at home. But as far as odds to win the Stanley Cup, uh, like I said, I'm still a little leery. I, I, I don't think I would put any money on that, uh, especially with the odds that you're given now. I mean, at the beginning of the season, you know, hell, you probably – had one, you know, there's some people that probably had one hell of a flyer that looks pretty good right now. Um, but if they're given short odds right now, I, I'm not a huge taker on that. What do you guys make of St. Louis? They have one of the better goaltenders uh, with a save percentage. They're 32 and 20. They're atop the central. Uh, they have a plus 15 scoring differential. Uh, are they a team that I can trust? Uh, they kind of have a, a fairly good road record, a uh, solid home record. They're about so-so on both of those. Are those that, is that a team I can trust, or is that more of a risky team if I'm going to try and bet them? <laughs> they're a gamble. Sorry. Pun intended. They're, they're suffering through uh, what do Wild fans like to call a swoon. Uh, with former <laughs> coach Mike Yo right now. Uh, and Carter Hutton, who has kind of stolen the goal from Jake Allen, you mentioned Carter Hutton's pretty good stats this year. Uh, and it's more to show that Jake Allen has kind of lost his uh, starting status with that team than anything. Interesting. Yeah, Allen used uh, all of his magic in the playoffs last year, as we saw. <laughs> He the well is now dry. Uh, one team, Very. one team that I was looking at is are the Toronto Maple Leafs. Are they for real? Uh, they are near the top of the Atlantic, thirty-two and nineteen plus twenty-six differential. Are, are they a team I can trust going forward throughout the rest of the season, or they, did they just have a hot start? I would say. I would say, yeah, I think they'll actually probably win a playoff round this year. Well, okay, I take that back. The Boston <laughs> Bruins are already walking it back. So there's no guarantee. But, you know, I think in the playoffs when having so much speed comes more into play, I think that definitely helps a, a younger team like Toronto. And I think if they can make a few decent acquisitions here in the trade deadline in a couple weeks, they're going to be a good team to uh, uh, probably win some money on. Yeah, I think with anything, anytime you have Austin Matthews, that, that kid is just so good. Uh, and, you know, their goaltending in Frederick Anderson is is pretty consistent. So uh, if, if you've got good odds on, on them doing some damage or if you just feel like, uh, you know, betting on a team that's kind of on the sexy side uh, on a particular night, that's not a bad play. And then looking at Washington, should I should I even risk putting any money on them to win uh, to win anything? Uh, I mean, they're so sporadic. Plus seven hundred to win the Eastern Conference. Uh, they are able to put together a pretty solid season yet again, thirty-one seventeen. But this is a trap, right? Washington is officially one of the bigger traps in sports. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> it's a trap. <laughs> I have made the mistake time and time again of falling right into the trap that the Washington Capitals set. And it's really going to have to be a, a show me kind of a thing for them as it's, they've had way better teams here in the last couple of years and they seemingly took a step back this last off season, but they're still best in the Metro division. But until they can get by the second round of the the playoffs, that's a risky bet to take. Yeah, I think when you're talking about people who have watched hockey for the last 10 to 15 years, I think you would have to give Washington plus 7,000 to win the East uh, before anyone's putting a bet on that. And then 
it, gosh, and they have such a they have a pretty solid home record too, which makes them even more tempting when they're on home ice. But that's it's just always yeah, regular crazy. season or the first round of the playoffs, sure. <laughs> but uh, any further, I mean, you're just, hosed. I, I would stay. I would stay away from them doing a whole lot of damage in the playoffs if if that's what you're betting. Yeah, well, and on on the road too, twelve nine and four on the road, uh, risky business as well there. Uh, what about the teams that made it all the way down to uh, to the late rounds of the playoffs? You got teams like Pittsburgh, Nashville. Uh, where do we stand on teams that made it deep into the playoffs last season? Is there a worry that late in the late in the hockey season there's some of that fatigue from playing so much hockey last season, or are these teams built deep enough to kind of last? Uh, Pittsburgh definitely isn't, um, but. They have such good high end talent that you know it. It wouldn't completely shock me to see them pull a three peat, even though a three peat is so insanely hard. I definitely wouldn't. I definitely wouldn't wager any money on it. Uh, Nashville, on the other hand, I I don't know that that's not a terrible bet. I mean, they they have gotten a little bit better. They added Nick Bonino. Uh, they somehow talked Mike Fisher out of retirement as well. Um, you know, they added Kyle Turris during the season, so. You know, that's not a, a terrible team to, to bet on. They're leading the Central right now, and, and it's pretty legit. And we saw the damage they did in the playoffs. The problem is, is I'm not uh, a huge believer in Pecorine's consistency, and he was a huge reason why they made it to the Stanley Cup Final last year. And I just I don't know that he can do that season after season. I just, I'm just not a huge, a, a big enough believer in him. And, and goaltending is 110% the most important thing in the playoffs. I think with Pittsburgh, until they actually lose, you're probably good putting some money down on them. Like The Penguins have always been really good, especially during this run of two Stanley Cups. Uh, they they kind of look like they shouldn't be there, but then they just find that next gear in the next like five games that follow. And that's why they've been able to reel off two straight Stanley Cups is – They've had some games over the last two postseasons where they just get flat out embarrassed, and you're just left going with, "Okay, they're done. They can't. They can't do that." And then they just come out and they just steamroll, as referenced by the last team I spoke on, the Capitals. In Pittsburgh, too, it just seems like that's one of the teams that can always find somebody to get a, at least a little bit hot, scoring wise, and they can always pull some goals out of somewhere and so that kind of that they only have a, a plus three differential but that always kind of puts them at the forefront of people's minds when they're they think about betting a, a, a certain hockey team especially if you haven't been following closely throughout the season it's just you know that there's going to be scoring eventually from somewhere on them and so you're just waiting for them to get hot again kind of and they also have a matt murray uh, i'm not sure if he's back yet mm-hmm. He's missed some time, I believe, with injury early on in the season, and then most recently his dad passed away, so he's been out. And, you know, if he hasn't come back already, like, he can probably go on a hot run again like he has the last two seasons that could very well take the Penguins to the rare three-peat. Gosh, that would be... If you were able to bet that at the beginning of the year... And they were somehow pull that off. That would be that would be the bet. That would be the bet for sure. All right, looking looking at uh, looking specifically at Minnesota, the hometown team. Uh, first of all, uh, we'll go Ben first. What are the impressions? But I want to get to both of you guys. What are the just the takeaways, the broad takeaways from this season so far? Oh, good lord! Um, uh, I asked the tough questions here. <laughs> well, you know, you mentioned I mentioned earlier betting on them at home, and, and that seems to be kind of a, a safe bet. And betting against them on the road also kind of seemed to be a safe bet until they throttled the Blues um, on uh, on Tuesday. But um, you know, it, it's really kind of a hard team to pick. I, I think uh, I think Vegas is having the same issue. I looked at the odds for tonight, and and they were only like a um, I think they were a plus one fifteen on the spread uh, on, on the a goal and a half spread, which are usually pretty large 
uh, you know, pretty large payouts for for favorites on those. And Vegas doesn't even really know what to make of of this team. So it, it's kind of a, a real enigma. You like to bet on teams that you know. You like to try to use some expert analysis. And as someone who uh, who you know lives, breathes, craps the wild uh, during the season, I I don't have my finger on this team any more than you know anybody off the street. And then this is kind of how this team has felt this season. They they've really really defied any kind of logic whatsoever in a lot of instances. So. Um, you know, from a fan standpoint, it's disappointing, and then from a betting standpoint, uh, I, I anybody who, who's brave enough to to bet on the wild, Godspeed. <laughs> yeah, was, uh, yeah. What, what do you think about? It's, it's this team has been so tough to to put their finger on all year, and you know, Ben and I just about echo something to that effect every podcast, every Giles and the Goalie podcast. We sit there and we go, "What what is wrong with this team?" Some some nights they they play like world beaters, like they've defeated the Vegas Golden Knights, one of the best teams in hockey in both meetings so far this year. Albeit, yeah, they've been at XL Energy Center. The Wild haven't yet right. gone to Vegas to get a taste of the Vegas flu that just about everyone else has gotten this year. But and then there's times like last Saturday in Dallas when they just come out. And one goal just sinks them, and it's such a it's such a risky thing to put money down on a team that you just don't quite know what you're going to get out of. And it is a little bit of it, maybe not entirely the reason, but is a little bit of the inconsistencies there because of how good uh, their division is. They have they play with St. Louis, Nashville, Winnipeg, Dallas, yeah. Colorado, Chicago. All of those teams are at least, except for Chicago, all of those teams are at least 10 games above 500. Yeah, that's that's definitely part of it. I mean, they picked a bad season to, to be kind of inconsistent and, and sketchy like this because, you know, the, the rest of the Central is is just incredible right now. I mean, that's that's why we see the struggles out of the same struggles out of the Blackhawks, who are obviously a, traditionally a Central power as well, so... Uh, it's part of that, and it's part of, you know, they made some moves this summer that tried to shake up the roster a little bit, and, uh, you know, Giles and I are kind of of the opinion that they didn't work out as, as well as as well as the Wild had hoped, so that has led to a little bit of the inconsistency as well, and obviously the injuries. I mean, the injuries have been a huge part. This team has played five games all season long with their entire lineup intact, um, so that's really been a big story as well. Mm-hmm. And if you look... Go ahead. I was gonna say, and Ben said on the last podcast, the the depth of this team really kind of got crushed in the in the off season, and that's really what been killing them on the road is their third and fourth lines, which are nowhere near as good as last year, are getting matched up against the opposition's best lines, and they're just getting pummeled nightly. Well, and two. Obviously, it's a little ways away, but if you're jumping ahead to the playoffs and Minnesota somehow slips into the playoffs and you're playing another team uh, in the the Central Division in the playoffs, they're all really pretty solid, except for if you go to the bottom there at Chicago. They're all very solid at home. So if you're going on the road in a playoff series against one of these teams, that is a really difficult task as well. But it's going to be hard even to get there just because of how how deep this division is and uh, you got teams like we were talking about earlier a Nashville who is not only a, a solid team but they also have proven last year that they can make not only a run to the playoffs but deep playoff run do you uh do you guys have any any players that kind of stick out to you guys that uh that maybe if you're betting on guys to uh, to do well on a night-to-night basis for the t- for the Wild that you would be feeling comfortable putting money on? As far as maybe just scoring or, or assists or, or points, somebody that you would feel money feel comfortable <clears throat> putting money down on to, to perform on a night-to-night basis? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> um, but no, seriously, like, I know Jason Zucker's a, a popular prop bet. Uh, Mikel Grandin is, is a popular prop bet. For some reason, Miko Koivu still is. 
uh, I would I would probably avoid Koivu for a lot of reasons. He, he seems to be having a really tough year and, and kind of seems to be aging in front of our eyes. But, uh, you know, Zucker and, and Granlin are, are guys that have been pretty reliable scorers. Uh, you can get decent prop bets. I think Zucker today to score is uh, plus 225. So that's that's not bad. I mean, that's not, uh, you know, a long shot by any means, but that, that seems pretty decent. That's that's a decent gamble. Mm-hmm. Um on the goaltending end, you know, Dubnik has has worked a lot. Uh, the over under for him on saves might be a good play. You don't make a ton of money on those, um, but this team allows a lot of shots. So, just with that in mind, the the, the NHL the way the, they do the betting in the NHL kind of is a cookie cutter approach, and uh, they they allow a lot of shots. The Wild do, and, and a lot of poor quality but high volume shots. So that's not a bad look either, because Dubnik has been, you know, uh, serviceable this season. He's he hasn't been uh, a world beater like he was for most of last year, but uh, you can you can probably win some money on that. And and him to shut out other teams is is not bad either. He's he's actually got a propensity to shut out teams a little bit more often than the than the average NHL goaltender. And you get you get like plus nine hundreds on those. So if you can hit on those every, every once in a while, you know that that's a pretty huge win. So then it sounds like, too, if you can get a, a solid bet on the under for some of these games, uh, if you're betting on the goaltender to shut out teams, then you're, you the under is a, a solid bet as well. Uh, the over-unders seem to all be the same. You're, you're looking at either five and a half goals or uh, six goals on the over-under on a lot of them, I'm, I'm, I would see. And you're only getting like a minus 105 to 125 on that. So you're not even getting your money back on a lot of the over-under bets. Um so if you got a really good feeling about a game, I, I can I can see that being a, a bet worthwhile. But there's just not a lot of money to be made there unless uh, you know you're you're feeling really good about one way or another. Anybody, uh, Giles, anybody who sticks out to you as far as just betting, or uh, are those guys kind of the solid the solid ones to lay money on? I'd say if you're gonna bet on just a player in the wild to get a point, I'd go with Mikhail Granlin. Uh, Eric, you know, Ben mentioned Eric Stahl. Mikhail Granlin would probably otherwise be leading the team in points if he hadn't missed a few games early on in the year with an injury. Uh, but you know, he's the Wild's best setup man, and he's found a, a good groove here in the last couple of years to, to score some goals. So I, you can't go wrong with with putting some money down on him. You know, getting on the score sheet on a nightly basis. And taking a broader look at, at hockey, uh, I wanted to go kind of s- jump into the future just a little bit. If I'm looking at the conference winners and I'm trying to predict who walks away with uh, with the title for East and West conferences, I've got Vegas at plus 300 in the West, Tampa Bay uh, plus 250 in the East. Those are kind of the, the chalk ones, the, the favorites there. Nashville is second in the West at plus 400. Bruins at plus 400 in the East. Are, are anybody is anybody outside of those kind of top four uh, really actually contenders in your guys' minds? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I like Winnipeg. Uh, you know they've they've really kind of turned around this season. They've been getting incredible goaltending out of out of a kid named Connor Hellebuck who is kind of a top prospect for a while. And uh, they've always been able to put up points in absolute bunches. So uh, if you can get some decent odds on Winnipeg, that's not a bad play. I feel like they could make some noise, even though they don't have a whole lot of playoff experience, kind of like how Nashville did last season. They're kind of, um, you know, a a similarly exciting team, even though they're not built very similar. Mm -hmm. Um, And out east, you know, we we talked about Toronto being interesting. Um, you know that that's one that's I don't know. Like I said, they they could stir some things up just because they've got so much young talent and and their goaltending isn't isn't too bad and they don't have a history of choking and dying like the Capitals. <laughs> and plus seven hundred on Toronto, plus six fifty on Winnipeg. So those are pretty solid value as well. Yeah, it's not bad. Any any chance that. Uh, that I should risk money on a team like the Blues? 
<laughs> I mean, well, as we fit. as we learned last year, like you know, the Blues, if you get hot goaltending, anything is possible. And you know, the Blues have two goalies who are pretty capable of catching fire at any moment, as we're seeing with Carter Hutton now as well. But I mean, right now, if you're thinking about it, I would steer clear of that. But you know, once you well, once you get into the playoffs, anything is possible, and the NHL is quite good at proving that every year. Especially when uh, when these games are, are seven series games, it's it, you really get teams. It's kind of like the NBA, where you really get teams getting familiar with each other, learning what their tendencies they like, and and what each team really likes to go to. And so late in the series, you got you find out how deep the pockets of the other team is by. Uh, how well they're able to adjust their game plan. So it makes it tough to, to bet on them. It also makes it more fun, though, in my opinion, at least. But I'm, I'm yeah, I can't, I can't imagine betting on playoff hockey. Like I've, I've done it before, to be honest, actually. But um, just the the inherent adrenaline rush that is playoff hockey. Like if 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 I actually had a considerable amount of money on the line, uh, I don't know how I survive that. It's not easy. Is the, <laughs> uh, the short answer to that? It's not easy. It's not always fun, uh, but uh, sometimes it pays off. Sometimes it pays off. Uh, we could go really broad if we wanted to, uh, and just bet it on the Stanley Cup. Uh, just go Vegas Golden Knights, six hundred plus six hundred. Let's go. First time they're in the NHL, uh, they they win a Stanley Cup. Let's <laughs> let's get it. Let, the Vegas Knights. I, I think. Uh, I think I, it would be fun to have them win the Stanley Cup. Uh, I think there's a lot of magic there that's being used up right now. Uh, uh, like I said, they scare me, and and you know some of their stats point to them being actually good, and some of their stats point to a little bit of regression. So it's kind of a mixed bag. But I, I'm still not. I, I love the I love the Vegas Knights. I love what they're doing. I think it's incredible. Um, but I am not ready to call them uh, my, a Stanley Cup favorite just yet. Fair enough. I might be getting a little ahead of myself. Uh, <laughs> so, be careful on the takeaways from the, the episode. Be careful on the wild when they're on the road. Uh, we have some players now that you can you can put money on. And uh, you guys like uh, Tampa Bay. You guys like Winnipeg. Those kind of teams to to bet on a night to night basis. Uh, Toronto is somebody to look out for. Uh, St. Louis is somebody where if their goalie gets hot. Jump on the the bandwagon for a few games if their goaltender gets hot. Am I missing anything, boys? Uh, Pittsburgh. Don't forget about Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. They're weirdly a dark horse as the two-time defending Stanley Cup champion. Gosh, gotta love those two-time Stanley Cup champion dark horses. And do not bet on the Capitals in the playoffs. Do not bet on the Capitals in the playoffs. Just hammer that in. Uh, The last thing I wanted to end on, uh, it disappointed me. I don't know how you guys feel about it. No NHL players in the Winter Olympics. I was disappointed because the hockey is really the only part of the Winter Olympics I really pay close attention to. And having the NHL players, I enjoyed having them in there. Uh, is it? Should I be happy that they're not in there? Or are you guys disappointed as well? What are your thoughts on this? <laughs> uh, yeah. Just... From a from a pure hockey standpoint, yes, it is disappointing to not see truly the best players in the world uh, competing on the world's biggest stage, the Winter Olympics, and truly the NHL kind of once again shooting itself in the foot by, you know, from mar- from a marketing standpoint to not let their players go to the Olympics. However, from a writer's standpoint, there are a lot of good stories that have since come out from players whose careers have otherwise been left for dead now getting a shot at representing their respective country. It, from, a gambling, from a pure gambling perspective, it makes it harder to bet on, for sure. Uh, from a viewing standpoint, though, I think that isn't there something that you lose a little bit? And I know uh, you don't want to send a bunch of NHL players and have some of them get injured and stuff like that. And I, I understand some of the reasons that the NHL did it for scheduling and things. Uh, but from a viewing standpoint, it feels like we're getting a little robbed. 
Oh, oh yeah. yeah, no, I mean, with, without a doubt, yeah. Um, and that was, I mean, the NHL didn't really care about that because they don't feel like it affects their product at all, and whereas, obviously, the injuries would affect their product, uh, but the players definitely wanted to go, and, and the fans definitely wanted the players to go, so uh, it's really, truly disappointing on, on every level. It makes things interesting, just in that you don't really know who's going to be good and who isn't. Uh, certainly, I think Russia has... A little bit of a leg up. Uh, some of the European countries have a little bit of a leg up because more of their more of their top flight players are going because the KHL sent uh, players to the Olympics. But um, otherwise, yeah, it's it's really uh, you know it's definitely going to be a down year as far as viewership, as far as the quality of hockey played, uh, all of those things. Oh well, I I guess I don't have much say in it because they still they still pulled them and I didn't like it so. <laughs> That tells you how much power I have. Uh, no, yeah. A- anything else? Uh, when's the next uh, Giles in the in the goalie podcast? Uh, next podcast we usually record Sunday and they get released uh, late Sunday or early Monday, uh, depending on my uh, spiritus beverages schedule. <laughs> so depending on how much car cough, right? Right. Well, actually, <laughs> this month will be always pretty much late Sunday now because I'm uh, trying to do one of those dry month things that I see people do in January, but I pushed mine until beginning after the Super Bowl. That's a good call. That's a good idea. Especially because the Super Bowl was in Minneapolis. You don't want to hold off on that. Yes. If you make the last eye in the Super Bowl... Uh, logo AT, you have Super Bowl lit. And that's exactly what it was. <laughs> I was uh, I was downtown uh, for the Super Bowl too, and they, uh, there was some rowdy Eagles fans. There were some rowdy Eagles fans taken to the streets. It was uh, it was quite a scene. It was interesting. Well, at least there wasn't any horse poop around. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that was so nasty. <laughs> Whew. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll we'll end on horse poop. We'll end on horse poop. Uh, thanks for joining us. Yep. Uh, the the podcast boys. Thanks for coming on and talking a little bit of hockey. And thank you to the listeners for listening to the latest gambling show on ZoneCoverage.com. Double or nothing. <laughs>